So this next one is, uh, we actually, it actually got talked about yesterday at the Everyday Health Awards. Uh, one of our judges uh, brought, brought, brought up what NeuroTrack is doing. So uh, the, the session's called The Audacity of an Algorithm. Um, th this whole notion of technology uh, helping Alzheimer's and diagnosis, and it's very, it's very exciting. And so it's all, it's a real honor to have Ellie here, their CEO, uh, her, the CEO of NeuroTrack. So uh, can we advance to the next slide, please? Thank you. And I'm going to read to you her New Year's resolution: is not to be patient and to find a way to push even harder every single day to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease and to meditate. Hi. I'm going to use this mic here. I hope you guys can all hear me. It's OK. So algorithms have been with us for a very long time. This ancient Babylon, Babylonian tablet was uh, created in 1600 BC. It's the very first known algorithm. And it shows an equation for the square root of two. It's one of the earliest algorithms for factorization and finding square roots. But as we all know, algorithms have been with us for a very long time. Today, they power everything from our Google searches to predicting stock market fluctuations to monitoring terrorist cells and national security. And we're seeing algorithmic applications to healthcare that now go way, be, way, way well, well, well beyond factoring pharmaceutical compounds. We see companies who are harnessing the power of algorithms and computing to do extraordinary things, from creating a healthcare marketplace where you can shop for the highest quality service and lowest cost medical procedure to uh, attaching chips to pills to help ensure that people take their medicine and track medical and, and, uh, and prescription adherence, to um, transforming cancer care by developing targeted therapeutics based on an individual's unique genomic profile. But as we all know and we've heard today over and over again, this type of work is much harder in healthcare. It's an industry that is highly regulated, rife with all kinds of acronyms, HMOs, PPOs, ACOs, the ACA. And as you can imagine, along with those acronyms come highly bureaucratic organizations that are very difficult to navigate. And aside from that, you have kind of the natural scientific and medical skepticism that goes with naturally dealing with health and human life. But as we also know, it's an industry that's, that is desperate for disruption. Um, and we, all of us in this room and, and here and out uh, in the tech world are pushing hard every day to continue to try to disrupt that system. But excuse me, um, at NeuroTrack, we're trying to understand whether it's possible to use technology or algorithms to disrupt a disease. We have obviously seen how drugs can disrupt a disease. Polio, here's an image of people who are lining up for the polio vaccine, and we've seen it with HIV AIDS, with cancer, with malaria. But can we use technology or algorithms to disrupt a disease when we don't yet have a therapeutic? So on to Alzheimer's disease. As many of you know, Alzheimer's is a disease uh, that begins in the brain 20 to 30 years before doctors uh, can see symptoms and can diagnose it. It's a neurodegenerative disease that slowly destroys your cognitive function and eventually your physical abilities. It has replaced cancer now as the number one feared cause of death. But what you may not know is the reality of its prevalence. So every 67 seconds, someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. There are 5.4 million people in the United States today who have the disease, and that number is expected to grow to 15 million people by the year 2050. And the cost of the disease is enormous, $214 billion in the US today, 1% of GDP. But the historical focus, somewhat naturally, has been, again, on trying to find a, a disease-modifying drug or a, a therapeutic solution. 
Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately, these trials have failed. Um, in fact, just about all of them have failed. We have zero preventative or curative therapeutics on the market today. And why? Well, Alzheimer's is a very complex disease that is difficult to understand. Um, but the other main reason is because we haven't had an early diagnostic test. The pharmaceutical companies haven't been able to identify people who are early, early on for the onset for the disease, but who don't yet show symptoms. People who we know are on the trajectory, but haven't yet converted. Um, in order to put those individuals into drug trials. We know today that in order to screen for a disease-modifying therapeutic in early-stage Alzheimer's, they have to find, they have to identify 10 people, and then of those 10, only one might be uh, enrolled in the, tri in the trial and would fit that, that criteria. And the reason, um, as you can imagine, that causes all kinds of cost uh, and extends the, you know, the recruiting time of uh, these trials enormously. So for us at, at Neurotrack, al algorithms play a very key role in powering our technology, which is an early diagnostic test for Alzheimer's disease. It was developed at Emory University by a group of uh, neuroscientists and neuropsychologists there and uh, tested over a five-year NIH-funded longitudinal study. The technology relies upon a person's innate preference for novelty. And we use that to track what's called recognition memory, which is the memory process that's housed in the hippocampus, which is the first part of the brain to be impacted by Alzheimer's disease. We use a web camera on your laptop or your iPad to track an individual's eye movement and to monitor where they're looking on a screen uh, while we display a series of both novel and familiar images over a period of four and a half minutes. And then we analyze all that information and can give a prognosis. And the results have been extraordinary. What? <laughs> uh, what we found was that those people who scored 50 or below, 100% of them went on to convert to Alzheimer's in the next three to six years. And those people who scored 67 or above, none of them converted. So we believe that this is an incredibly powerful tool that will help pharmaceutical companies identify these individuals for, uh, for Alzheimer's disease. So I wanted to give you just a little bit of a sense of how the test works. Here you see a person who is healthy, who's taken our test, and um, we display these images over time. That person is spending the majority of time looking at a novel image. Again, the novel image. And in the next slide, you'll see someone with Alzheimer's disease. And there, their brain can't distinguish between the novel and the familiar. They spend equal time looking at both because their brain treats both images as new. They can't distinguish the fact that, uh, that they haven't, that they've seen one previously in the, in the, in the deck. So what we have is a highly accurate technology that is non-invasive, inexpensive, quick, and massively scalable. And we're working now with pharmaceutical companies and scientists around the world to help them find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. But what we have learned is that everyone needs to be involved in order to really, truly uh, make an impact in this disease. And so we're giving everyone in this room and around the world, frankly, to be, call, uh, to be part of what we're considering to be the mother of all online studies. And so if you go to our web, our website, you can sign up, and in a few months you'll receive an invitation to take our test and to then donate your data. And we're going to gather all of that data and open it up to anybody who wants to use it in an anonymized fashion and just see what they can find. Um, we believe that, uh, that this is a disease that's going to take everybody coming to the table and collaborating in ways that we've never seen before. And so we hope that you will join us in the fight to cure Alzheimer's disease and never underestimate your ability to make a difference.